Hello all, so in last lecture we saw that we need to convert our baseband signal to passband signal in order to transmit it through channel. Because passband signals can only transmit through channel in most of the cases. Right? So there are certain advantages because the passband signals have will as we know that it will be a signal with high frequency. So high frequency signals will be less deteriorated due to noise and there are some other reasons as well. So that's why there is a need to convert from baseband to passband. But now what is the need to convert from passband to baseband? That is, what is the need for this vice versa connection? So most of our processors, that is DSP processors, all are designed to process our baseband signals because it is easy to compute because computation is very less and easy, right, in the baseband domain. And that's why at the receiver side, when we receive this passband signal to the channel, at the receiver side, we convert again it to baseband. So in this lecture, we'll be mainly mainly focusing on this conversion and the how passband signal is, how the equivalent baseband representation is there for the given passband signal and so on. So just to summarize, we know that given a baseband signal, if we will multiply this rotating complex exponential with the baseband signal, it will give us passband signal. And the other way around will be achieved by given a baseband signal, just multiply it with the same rotating exponential but rotating in other direction that is minus sign and again we will be having our placement signal back so this operation will happen at the receiver side and this will happen at the transmitter side right now let's try to discuss in detail the passband signal and its complex placement representation so sp of t that is our passband signal is given by sp of t equals to root 2 times cosine bar I will tell you what is this cosine bar minus root 2 of ss of t into sine bar now before that let me tell you one important point that in reality do we have this complex signals what do you think these are complex signals and we don't have this signal so in reality, we can't multiply our x of t with just complex exponential. So instead, we will be using cosine and sine terms. And this we will see, okay, in this lecture only, by the end of this lecture. So stay tuned. But this complex exponential signal will be used for mathematical ease, right? So for mathematical ease, we use this complex exponential, okay, just to understand the things more clearly. Now, here, this is the most general representation. Here, root 2 is the normalization factor. So some books are not using this as normalization factor. I will tell you the reason why they are not using what they are using differently over there. Then SC of T is the cosine part of our baseband signal, sorry, passband signal SP of T and SS of T is obviously the sine part since it is multiplied with sine so it is sine part of our passband signal sp of t and obviously omega is this frequency and it is given by 2 pi fc as well correct now most important thing or we can say the one important takeaway from this relation this relation is very much important is that we know that this is our passband signal and this will travel through our channel right so it has to be real signal and in order to have this to be real signal, the cosine part as well as the sine part, these two things should also be real, right? So the most important point here is that the cosine part and sine part should also be real, right? Now let's move further. The next topic is, I will tell, I will connect all the topics, right? So don't think that just they are not connected. Now let's see the complex envelope. Of the password signal that is SP of T. So, what is the complex envelope of our password signal SP of T? It is also called complex baseband representation of password signal. You can note this out complex baseband representation of the given password signal SP of T. So, it is simply given by S of T and it is the cosine part that we discussed in the last slide plus j times the sine part that's it correct so 
which is also important. Now let's try to derive relation between S P of t and S of t. We know equations for both of them. So simply we can derive equation like this. I will prove later. Let me first write. So it's root two times real part of our S of t e power j two pi f c t. Right. So how this is correct? Let us verify. So just I am writing S of t with this. So the next page I am continuing with root two times. We have to take real part of. I am writing S of t s s c of t plus j s s of t, and by Euler's identity e power j two pi f c t can be written as cos two pi f c t plus j sine two pi f c t. So now we have to take real part, right? So root two is outside. Multiplication of this uh, S C of t with cosine will give us real part. So real part and other real part will be from this thing because j square is minus one. So minus and S S of t and sine two pi f c t. The other two terms will give us imaginary parts and root two is outside. So you can verify that this is the equation of the same S P of t that we wrote here. Just here, omega c is there, but we know omega c is two pi f c. So here, it's in terms of just two pi f c. That's it. Okay, so this is the relation that we prove. So this is important, right? Now let's move further. That given this uh, s of t, now let's try to plot the block diagram. That is, if we are given a baseband signal, can we convert it into passband signal using this equation? Let us try to draw the block diagram. So I am drawing the block diagram from this equation. So let's try. So given a signal S of t, we have to first of all multiply it with e power j two pi f c t. I am taking the root two root two here and only. Sorry for the tongue twisting. Uh, so here you can see s of t and e power j two pi f c t. Just we are multiplying. I I have taken this as well, and you have to just take the real part. So let's take the real part. So the real part, and at the end we will directly get our passband signal. So we have successfully converted our baseband signal to passband signal. Right now, can we go other way around? Okay. So let's try to see that. But before that, let me just label this block diagram. This is called the complex baseband representation. Baseband representation of passband signal. Passband signal S P of t, right? So given S of S of t is the complex baseband representation of our passband signal S P of t. Now let's Try to go other way around. It is given S P of t can be derived S of t. So from S P of t to S of t. So we know what is S P of t. Writing it quickly. Now I am just having the values of cosine and sine. We know cosine can be written like this. And similarly, sorry. And similarly, sine can be written like this: e power j omega c t minus e power minus j omega c t, and divide by two j. Right. So now let's pass this signal through Hilbert filter. So let's say the uh, frequency response of the Hilbert filter is h of f. So we know the Hilbert filter is one for positive frequencies and zero for negative frequencies. So in short, it's a set function, but in frequency domain, right? So it will pass the positive frequency. So this negative frequencies will get cancelled, and it will reject them. So at the end, we are left with root two times. Just I'm writing the components with positive frequencies, and minus root two s s of t e power j omega c t by two j. So just simplifying this root two. Then we have S C of t plus 
as s of t obviously j times 1 by j is minus j so it will become plus here and e power j omega ct is common. So this is very simple calculation. Now this term is familiar. We know this is nothing but our s of t or complex envelope. So we can write as 1 by root 2 s of t e power j omega ct. Correct? So we can easily go the other way around. Like given s p of t, let me just draw here only. But given s p of t, just pass it through Hilbert filter and we will get what? 1 by root 2 s of t, we will get this into e power j omega ct. Now, in order to recover just s of t, just multiply this signal with root 2 times e power minus j omega ct and this multiplication will give result s of t. So, we can go other way around as well. Let me just draw this in the next page to be great. So, s p of t, pass it through it but filter. And just multiply this with root 2 times e power minus j omega ct. Because here we are having 1 by root 2 s of t e power j omega ct. So this will give us s of t. So we can go other way around as well. You can see clearly from here. Right? So this thing is done on the receiver side. So that's all about this. Pass band to base band conversion and vice versa. And as I said, in reality, we don't have such complex signals. And what we will do in reality, let's try to see that as well. So, in reality, what happens? Real cases. So, in real cases, first of all, given our base band signal, that is, we have cosine and sine components, we have to convert this into our pass band. So, just simply multiply with cosine. And just multiply this with minus root 2 sine. And just add this because this is nothing but our equation of our sp of t. You can verify this that this multiplied with this and this minus y root 2 times sine omega ct multiplied with this. And if we will add then we will get our pass band signal. So this is very simple in real cases. And Similarly, the other way around can be achieved by the following block diagram. So, it's very simple. SP of t, again multiply this with root 2 cosine and here multiply it with minus root 2 sine and just pass it through low pass filter. We will see what this filter will do in a while and this will give us cosine and sign components respectively. Right now, let's see how we'll get this. So quickly, just we have to multiply sp of t with root two times, of course, cosine omega ct. In our first, you can see we have to multiply sp of t with root two times cosine omega ct. So first, let us multiply. So I'm writing. We know what is sp of t. So I'm writing quickly cos omega ct minus root 2 times ss of t sin omega ct and root 2 times cos omega ct. Just opening the brackets, you will get twice sc of t cos and cos will be cos square and twice ss of t will be sin omega ct cos omega ct. So, you can write this as 1 plus cos 2 theta this is cos 2 omega ct by 2, right? And we have two outside, so this two and two will get cancelled. And similarly, this two sine cosine will give us sine two theta. So we are writing sine two omega theta. Now, since we have low pass filter, so this high frequency component that is centered at twice omega c will be get cancelled. This will also similarly get cancelled. So at the end, we are just left with this into this. Okay, because multiplication of this with this will give us zero because we are passing through low pass filter. So at the end we are left with just SC of t. So we have successfully recovered our SC of t. And by similar procedure you can recover our SS of t. Right? So that's all about this lecture. In next lecture we will be seeing some few more properties of our passband signal. And from then we will be starting with our modulation schemes. So that's all. Thank you.